Hello and welcome to another segment with the Nairobi Hospital. Today we will be discussing about mental illness with the emphasis on depression. Now, depression according to WHO has affected about 300 million people globally. And it also affects the way we think, the way we feel, affecting our ability to work at home and other things that we do on our normal days. Today we are joined by Margaret Sirima, who is the principal of the Nairobi Hospital at the College of Health Sciences. Karibu sana, Margaret. Thank you. Thank you, Muthoni. Maybe you could start us off by what, what mental illness is all about and how depression comes into that. Um, thank you once again. Um, depression is a mental illness. And um, a mental illness is a, a, a disorder or a condition that affects, like you rightfully said, the way people think, the way they feel, the way they behave, and ultimately the way they interact with the environment. That means uh, people and what they do. And therefore, it's likely to cause what you refer to as social occupational dysfunctioning, affecting people's work you know, at home, um, at school, and uh, at the place of employment. Um, but according to uh, the American Psychiatric Association, there are more than 200 uh, mental disorders. So depression is one of them, but it is a serious uh, disorder and also common. Like you rightfully said that about 300 million people live with de depression globally. And in Kenya, about 1.9 million have depression. And that is those that have been diagnosed. We want to believe that there could be higher, it's only that uh, diagnosis and therefore treatment is not as good as it should be uh, because of some factors we shall be looking at. Um, it, it is serious also because um, when it's not treated, it could also lead to uh, suicide. And uh, WHO also tells us that um, 800, about 800,000 people commit suicide uh, uh, globally. So that is, um, that's how serious it is. So just to define what depression is, it is an abnormality, it a, it's a disorder that is characterized by abnormality of, um, of the mood. It is characterized by an abnormally low mood. To give the features of depression, which is important for us to know, there are nine features of depression. But uh, for us to say that you have depression, you have to at least have five features. So one needs to present with an unusually or an abnormally low mood, which is present and persistent nearly the whole day or the whole day. It could also be characterized by, by sadness. Uh, one is teary. And for the young people, it could be irritability and sometimes anger, which could be even be, be misplaced. And then the other symptom is that one could lose interest in things that they used to enjoy. Um, what we sometimes refer to as an anhedonia. They, 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 maybe it's this young person who loved to play football, they loved to watch, to watch the TV, they loved to be on their phone, and no longer, all, all of a sudden they lose interest in that particular area. Then, it could, then those are the key, the key symptoms. So one, somebody has to present with at least one of the two, together with the, with the following. Uh, uh, change in eating patterns, so they either are overeating or undereating. It could be change in sleeping patterns. They are not sleeping or they have poor quality of sleep. They go to sleep, they are not, they, 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 they are not able to sleep or they, have, they keep waking up uh, in the middle of the night. So basically poor quality of sleep. Or they could go to sleep and wake up later on in the night, 1 a.m. and are unable to fall back to sleep. It, then then there, there's ex excessive fatigue. You know, loss of energy, uh, then reduced concentration, hopelessness and worthlessness and uselessness or excessive guilt. It could also be characterized with, um, you know, slowing down, just slowing down. What you refer to as the commotory tradition, somebody is completely slowed down. If it's a mother, they're unable to, to, to cook for the family in good time. Uh, if it is a, a student, they can do their assignments in good time. Um, you know, if you're working within a team, you know, you're behind the team and you may slow the team down. And then lastly, thoughts of death, um, ideas of suicide, sometimes plans of suicide, and sometimes people have even attempted suicide. And you may even live with people who have attempted suicide, but because it wasn't actualized, you'll never know that they had attempted suicide. I think not too long ago in the papers, there was this girl who wrote that she, you know, she took an, an overdose of drugs, slept, and she was shocked when she woke up the following morning. 
So as long as somebody has five symptoms and they have been persistent for at least two weeks, then we should suspect depression. And, and, and why this is important uh, for us to know, not everybody everywhere, from primary school, secondary school, at work in the community, in the church, um, we need to have some of these, to know these symptoms so that you can be able to identify deviation from normal behavior. Um, in school, it is important that teachers know the children well or the students well. Peers know their friends well because we spend so much time together, even at workplace. We spend a lot of time at workplace. So it may be easier for a colleague to pick up changed behavior or um, that these symptoms have set in as opposed to even a family member where you go home to sleep. As a country, we are more aware. Uh, or we, are, we, are, we are better off than where we were. And maybe that is why the diagnosis of that prevalence that we are talking about of 1.9, that's why we are there, because more and more people are seeking for treatment. However, there's still a lot of stigma about depression. Uh, because if you are depressed, uh, or if you know, somebody says, you're you know, if you're depressed today, God forbid, uh, the first thinking is, what is the husband doing? Um, you know, it is caused by others. And therefore, the, part of the reason why there's a lot of stigma, if a child is depressed, then people think, you know, these parents are not good, do, doing good parenting. And, and this hinders people from seeking treatment. For a long time, if it happens within the church setup or re religious forums, it is probably, it's, it's demons and, and, and things like that. So again, stigma. And, and I believe this is what some, these have been some of the hindrances to, uh, to seeking treatment or hindrances to talking about it. Mm -hmm. Yes. You have mentioned about uh, Kenya. Mm -hmm. And in Kenya, we have 1.9 million people affected. Mm -hmm. What groups of people are highly affected? We have the children, we mm -hmm. have the men, and we have the women. I think it cuts across. Mm -hmm. However, the prevalence is higher in women than it is in men. Oh. Um, but it cuts across children as well, not just the youth, children as well that do experience uh, depression. Again, it's important to know that um, you know, people think it's maybe the day-to-day -day experiences and therefore the thinking that a child then should not be depressed because they're not struggling. But risk factors for depression go beyond the daily events of life. It, it, um, you know, we have biological factors. Things like genetics, this genetic predisposition, uh, biological predisposition, probably you know the chemicals in the body, they're in, in the brain, they they are they are they are reduced for a reason for a reason or not of our own making, and therefore you see it could go beyond us. It goes beyond the family. It goes beyond the normal interactions, but of course we have the life events, the the the, the, the experiences that we may have, which may be, may become a trigger to an already predisposed person to depression. So it cuts across. Um, I, I want to believe that probably women, uh, the prevalence of women is higher because we also have, we know that some hormones, that some female hormones, um, one called estriadiol, has also been associated with, 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 with depression. So therefore, probably that's why the prevalence is a bit high, just in, in my thinking. But also probably more women talk about it and more women will go to seek help. We probably are talking with many men who are functioning on a day-to-day -day but could be depressed. And therefore their, their, their interactions, um, personal interactions are, are, are not as healthy. Yes, it cuts across. Out of the 1.9 million, million mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. are they all on treatment? Mm -hmm. They are all on mm -hmm. treatment? We know that in normal circumstances, not everybody who is depressed is on treatment. Many people do not go for treatment. And many people start treatment and they do not keep on to the treatment. So the, uh, out of that 1.9 uh, million, I can, uh, I, can be, I can say probably with confidence that not all of them are on treatment. Mm -hmm. And what could be the barriers to treatment? There, there are several barriers. Okay. One, we have cultural barriers. You know the thinking okay. that you know, you're a child, 
you should not be depressed. Mm -hmm. And you, you, you know, you take your child to a physician, mm -hmm. they diagnose depression, we need to put this child on treatment. And, and the thinking, no, children don't get depressed. Mm -hmm. So we have our own cultural barriers. We, we have barriers because of ignorance, like I said. Um, we don't seek treatment for depression because we shouldn't be depressed in the first place. Or there are many other things we can do to stop this depression. Mm -hmm. We can alter the, the interactions at the home at the home front. Or we can actually withdraw that person from that environment that seems to be hostile. Mm -hmm. um, then we also have re lack of resources. We, we know that, uh, for example, we only have um, not very many mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. mental health hospitals. Mm -hmm. And even when they are there, there's already stigma in seeking treatment from those institutions because community has actually stigmatized that setup. And if you tell somebody today you cannot afford a private hospital, a private doctor, but there, there is a good institution where you can get help from. Mm -hmm. And it is a good institution mm -hmm. where you can get help from. And people will be reluctant to do that mm -hmm. because of what it's associated mm -hmm. with. Um, then sometimes fear of being on treatment for the rest of your life. That's not usually the case. It's not always that um, you know, you'll be on antidepressants for the rest of your life. You may start with a high dose, it's reduced uh, because you're able to cope. And then when you have developed coping, uh, coping skills, when you're unable to, um, in a healthy way, interact with the environment, probably when the stressors that were triggering that depression have been reduced or have been removed, then one can, can, um, can get to a place where you can cope with psychotherapy and not necessarily treatment. Mm -hmm. And uh, medication, mm -hmm. and let me say that not everybody who is depressed needs to go on the tap on the pill. Mm -hmm. We have we have many ways of, of you know there are several ways of, of, of treating depression, and one of them is is counselling. Not every patient needs to go on the pill. They can you know on on assessment, uh, one can be able to tell whether this is somebody who can be able to do well mm -hmm. with with therapy. Some people just need to be helped to handle or to develop coping skills. And when that is done, they are good to go. They, are, they can be able to interact with the, in a, with the environment in a healthy manner. They, they can be able to solve their problems mm -hmm. and, and not get to the end of feeling overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. um, so then you have helped. Mm -hmm. There are those ones who may need to go on treatment, but probably not for long. And there are those ones who may need to go for treatment probably for a little longer. The discussion on mental illness mm -hmm. is uh, approached differently mm -hmm. in different countries. Mm -hmm. And I'll support my statement with this argument. Um, in the first world countries, like let's say in, the Ameri in America, mm -hmm. United States of America, mm -hmm. somebody can, you can actually meet somebody and they'll openly tell you, I suffer from uh, depression, mm -hmm. uh, scriptophania, mm -hmm. all those diseases, and they're open about mm -hmm. it for how many years mm -hmm. and the kind of medication mm -hmm. that they're taking to mm -hmm. manage their illnesses. Mm -hmm. How do we adopt such a system to reach a point where depression now in Kenya will not be viewed as a Mwendawazimu kind of mm -hmm. case? Mm -hmm. I think we need to get to a place where we can freely talk about it. Mm -hmm. In 2017, mm -hmm. uh, I think WHO um, the focus was on depression, yeah. and um, there, there was, um, if I put it like the slogan, depression, let's talk. In other words, let's talk about it, mm -hmm. and it is real, let's talk about it. Mm -hmm. we, so we need to, dis, to destigmatize, to demystify this illness, and, and normalize it. Normalize it, what do I mean normalizing it? Um, we can comfortably say that I have hypertension, and I'm on medication. So mm -hmm. we have to destigmatize it at every level. Mm -hmm. Good understanding of what it is, that it is a disorder, mm -hmm. like any other disease that can be treated. Mm -hmm. And I think probably part of, part of the, the why they stigma is that most people who are mentally sick have been found on the street where there's poor, no, no management. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't need to get there. Mm -hmm. So, and, and maybe the thinking as if we get there, you know, if, if, if I have this, mm -hmm. Would people, if I say I have depression, would people be thinking that this is the next place that I'm going to? Mm -hmm. You see, one of the places, what, one thing that happens is that when somebody is in trouble, they run to a safe place. Mm -hmm. And one of the safe places to run to is to the church. Mm -hmm. So then even at that place, people need to know this is an illness like malaria. Yes. 
and so with treatment this person can recover mm -hmm. only then if we are talking about it comfortably at an institutional levels um, social organizations and so on then people will be better able or they will be more comfortable talking about it then even at corporates and um, you know with employers because some people when they have a mental illness and depression probably it reduces their opportunities for growth yeah. they miss out on opportunities and yet we know that if they are well supported they can function just like anybody else or probably even better mm -hmm. and so if we know if we get get away from that place of destigmatizing at the family level at the community level institutional level mm -hmm. then we'll be better able to talk about it and also uh, those anybody who has gone through it you know in this country I am not very sure that we have people who are in top corporates or um, probably significant members of the society who can come about and say, I have depression, I have coped, look how far I have gone, I am very productive, but I, and I am in control, I'm in charge of my life. Only then will people say, you know what, people are talking about it. So let's talk. Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you have enough resources and also healthcare providers in dealing with mental illnesses in Kenya? We have very few psychiatrists. If if I'm not wrong, I think uh, the current statistics are so was 20, uh, 88, 88 in psychiatrists in the country. There may be more now, mm -hmm. um, and then about 450 um, to 500 mental health um, trained nurses. But let me also say, apart from those that has, have specialized in that area, any doctor mm -hmm. who goes through medical school mm -hmm. and any nurse who goes through a nursing school, mm -hmm. they go through training okay. in mental health. Mm -hmm. And there are also rotations in those clinical uh, placements. Mm -hmm. So any health care provider mm -hmm. at the level of the nurse and the doctor, and I believe the clinical officers, mm -hmm. know and would understand these disorders okay. and for that reason I would say we may not have too many mm -hmm. but at least we have enough who can be able to diagnose mm -hmm. or to suspect and therefore refer for further treatment okay yes so in our discussion today mm -hmm. depression is treatable any yes. mental illness is mm -hmm. treatable mental illness m m it is mental illnesses are treatable mm -hmm. we do appreciate that there, there, there is um, some level to which one may not go back to normal functioning, mm -hmm. but yes, it's treatable. We have some mental disorders where once diagnosed and somebody, it can be controlled, mm -hmm. somebody may not go back to their previous level of functioning, mm -hmm. but they can function to a level and they can be supported to function at that level. Mm -hmm. I think before we finish, let me say this, that um, often when people do not understand their symptoms, mm -hmm. they do not understand why they are the way they are mm -hmm. they may and they have negative negative feelings or negative emotions mm -hmm. they sometimes go to self-treatment this could even be using substances of abuse sub substances for example alcohol and other prescription or non-prescription drugs mm -hmm. and so if these substances make them feel better it numbs their negative feelings mm -hmm. and it makes them feel normal they can sustain this mm -hmm. and it may now lead to another problem that is substance use disorder mm -hmm. and when it gets there you actually increase the risks for mm -hmm. suicide because mm -hmm. depression in itself is a risk for suicide when it's not treated mm -hmm. when there's a combination of substance use it even becomes worse so um, and that's why it's important mm -hmm. to be able to diagnose early seek for treatment so that one does not need to go that path. Okay. And uh, probably well, because we know that there has been a very high uh, prevalence of use of alcohol and mm -hmm. other substances, mm -hmm. I think at some times it even, um, you know, even the head of uh, the state addressed that. Mm -hmm. Could it be that people are going through this path because they have you know, emotions that they are not able to understand and therefore treating them? something good to explore mm. yeah okay thank you thank you very much thank you very much margaret for that insightful information on depression and uh 
I know people will be open to talk and reach out to people who have also been affected and advise them to seek treatment. Thank you very much for Thank joining you. us today. Thank you very much for having me. Mm. Let's continue with this wonderful conversation in the comment section below and both our websites, that is the Capital FM website and the Nairobi Hospital website. I've been your host, Modoni Wabero.